Hello and well, welcome to today's talk. It's Monday the 8th of May. Now, I've been a bit concerned about the excess deaths of late in the United Kingdom. So I've looked at this and I've also done a bit of an international comparison. And we do see that since the start of 2022, when COVID deaths were declining, in most areas at least, in most countries, there's uh, been a sustained amount of uh, excess deaths more than we would expect based on previous year's averages for the time of year. Now let's get straight down to specifics on this because the figures from the United Kingdom are, are really quite, um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll let them speak for themselves. Office for National Statistics, excess deaths, dramatic increase in the week ending the 21st of April. Most of these are, virtually all of these are certificated deaths. So this is accurate data from death certificates. The number of deaths registered in the United Kingdom in the week ending the 21st of April, that's week 16 of the year, was 14,024, 22.1% uh, above the five-year average. Um, th this is very high, 22.1% above the five-year average for the equivalent week in previous years. And this works out at 2,540 excess deaths. Now, so happens that one of those uh, deaths was a personal friend of mine. And um, th these are not statistics. Th these are human beings. 2,540 uh, excess deaths, more than we would expect. Um, mainstream media doesn't seem to be saying anything about it. Um, Chief Medical Officer has not been on TV declaring a national emergency and saying, well, let's get to the bottom of this. Deafening silence. Um, it's very strange, and I'm just delighted that I can be back this week and share this information with you for your consideration. And again, I'm only going to be giving data. Uh, this is, as we say, this is from the Office for National Statistics. So 2,540 deaths. Just imagine this had been a terrorist attack. It, the country would have been in a state of war. But that's how many excess deaths there were in week 16. That's just one week period. Now, the majority of these were not COVID deaths. Um, 615 involved uh, COVID, but of course, many of these, as we'll see, were incidental. Now, the figures for England and Wales. Um, week 16, um, 12,420 deaths registered in England and Wales. 530 of these mentioned novel coronavirus, 4.3%. But uh, of the 538 that mentioned novel coronavirus, 66.5%, 358 had uh, this recorded as the underlying cause of death. Um, but again, the vast majority of these people had significant comorbidities and were very much in the elderly part of the uh, demographic. So um, somewhat up to the judgment of individual medical practitioners filling out death certificates, I would thought what the cause of death is there. But many of those, we can say, were not COVID. So, of, of, so at most, I would say 358 involved COVID uh, out of the uh, 2,540 excess deaths that there were. Now, the number of deaths was above the five-year average. Private homes, 29% above. 771 deaths. Hospitals, 20% uh, above, 20.2% above. 924 of excess deaths. This is England and Wales data. Care homes, 25.3% above, 525 excess deaths. Other settings, institutions, prisons, etc., 11.7%, 92 above the five-year average. Um, th this is concerning and why alarm bells aren't going off all over the place i have no idea let's look at a graphic here this is the graphic we're used to seeing about the excess deaths so the blue are covid deaths during the covid waves as we would expect uh, the black line is what we would expect for the averages these gray areas have been affected by previous high death rates in previous years in the covid pandemics therefore we would expect these figures to be even lower um, so this is what we would expect. We would expect them to be um, below the average. Here, of course, we see that they've remained uh, above the average. Um, only the blue being COVID-related deaths, and even those a lot not directly attributable to COVID. And if we look at recent times, we see that the deaths have been well above 
what we would expect for the time period and the latest one as we've said um was um 20 uh 22.1 percent higher than we would expect in terms of excess deaths now i'm going to show you some other countries now and I've put the cutoff on our world in data graphics here from 2022 when we would expect the deaths from COVID to be going down because 2022, start of 2022, of course, was uh, we were by that time we were uh, more comfortably than previous waves into the uh, into the Omicron era, accompanied by far less deaths. Of course, the United States a bit of an exception to that, as we'll see. So let's look at some other countries now. Now this these are a range of other countries here. Now, this is the 0% line here. So we see that most countries have been above what we would expect since, as we've said, January 2022. Now, I know that's a bit of a scramble there, but we get the idea that it, most of countries are above average. So I've broken this down into individual countries. So this first one here is Australia. Now, um, this is 10%. So uh, 0% would be somewhere below this. So what we see is deaths, uh, there's been excess deaths in Australia and sometimes very high excess deaths in Australia since January 2022 uh, all the way through to January uh, 2023. And again, not really reflected in the mainstream media in Australia. Why aren't Australians concerned about this? Many of you are who watch this video, but the, the mainstream media and mainstream politicians seem to be talking about this very little which is really quite amazing but that's that's the data there for australia um above what we would expect all the time january 2022 to january 2023 uh canada likewise again this is the 10 percent line here so did it just about go down to normal then perhaps but all of this is above the average and Canadian deaths remain above the average. Um, so excess deaths there, and this is excess mortality, deaths from all cause compared to average over previous years. A lot of excess deaths in Canada. Uh, deaths from all cause compared to the average of previous years, of course, is the same. Denmark, again, Denmark at least fell below average there for a period of time. But again, we see that the bulk of this is above the average that we would expect based on the five-year average. This is an international phenomena that's going on here. And very few people seem to be that concerned about it. At least an officialdom. Uh, Germany, again, that's the 0% line there. And we see it's been above average for the vast majority of the time, just dipping below a couple of times. But of course, all this area under the graph are people's lives. Uh, Ireland, again, um, dipping below the 0% once and maybe a little bit now there. But again, the vast majority well above, sometimes peaking highly above the five-year average for Ireland. Israel, again, above the five-year average virtually all the time throughout uh, all of 2022 into 2023 uh, uh, Italy again above the average line uh, above the zero percent marker for the majority of the time in Italy uh, Japan well this is the 10 percent line here for Japan so Japan has been well above for December 31st 2021 all the way through um, to more recent data uh, Netherlands um, went down below a little bit in January 22, but again, the vast majority of the time, it's been above the five-year average, that being the 0% line there in the Netherlands. New Zealand, that's the plus 5% line there. So New Zealand has always been well above, dropping down to about plus 4%, but again, well above for the vast majority of that time period, January 2022 to April 2023 in New Zealand. Norway, basically, likewise, increased numbers in Norway. Um, Scotland, much the same pattern. Um, this is uh, Spain, again, a couple of dips below, but above for the vast majority of the time. Sweden, 
slightly better, but still largely above the 0% line. Taiwan, which we've been following on uh, on various videos, we, we followed uh, Taiwan quite a lot in the early stages. They were very proactive um, in many ways. But now, um, that's the 10% mark there, above uh, what we would expect in terms of excess mortality all the way through. United Kingdom, as we've said, now this data is clearly out of date in the United Kingdom. Now this line will have shot up to uh, 22%, uh, 20, what was the precise figure for the United Kingdom? 22.1% um, above the five-year average. The United States, now this in the United States here at the start of 2022, there was a lot of deaths from Omicron. And we mentioned in the United States that there was many more deaths from Omicron than other parts of the world largely because of the comorbidities due to things like obesity and hypertension and diabetes in the United States. Uh, sad situation, but that's the way it's been. But if we look at here, this is the 5% line here. So um, basically excess deaths have only just gone below the five-year average for all of that time period, January 2022 to March 2023. They've been above what we would expect. So... All of these Western sophisticated countries with significant increased amounts of deaths. Now, thankfully, the Eastern European countries, which I don't want to be disrespectful, but maybe slightly less uh, advanced countries in some ways. Um, Hungary, as we see there, the rate has been consistently lower than the United States. Likewise, Poland, Eastern European country. Um, yeah, they had some problem there with, uh, with Omicron, but largely below so this is the United States here, Poland largely below the excess deaths of the United States. Again, Romania um, consistently lower when in, compared in comparison to the United States. Um, Serbia lower, uh, Slovakia lower, um, and uh, South Africa lower than the United States. So... We see all we see all these differences now. We do have a way of thinking about this. Um, it's called the Bradford Hill criteria um, to help us work out what's causing these things. Now, I don't think anyone's saying it's one factor. Multiple factors are almost certainly at play here, but um, are some factors more significant than others? This will be found out eventually, but at the moment, people don't seem to be investigating it too much. So Bradford Hill criteria, going back to the 60s and 50s, when they discovered the cause of smoking, uh, smoking causing lung cancer. Bradford Hill said the larger the association, the more likely it is that it's causal. So we're looking for something that's associated. Consistent findings observed by different people in different places. Well, we've just seen that, haven't we? Different countries. Lack of alternative explanations for what turns out to be the main, uh, the main explanation. Although in this case, as we've said, it, it's certainly multifactorial. The effect has to occur after the cause. So it's the cause followed by the effect. Greater exposure should generally lead to a greater incidence of the effect. So greater exposure to whatever the cause is should lead to greater incidence of the effect. A plausible mechanism between cause and effect is helpful. So is there a biological possible mechanism between causes that could be discovered and um, the effect? Coherence between epidemiological and laboratory findings increases the likelihood of an effect. Is there any laboratory data that could be useful? Occasionally it's possible to appeal to experimental evidence, possibly including animal, exper animal experimentation, which we don't like, but if the data is there, we could use it. Analogies or similarities between the observed association and any other associations. Is this analogous to other things? And sometimes reversibility. But at the moment, I'm afraid we are seeing, as we've said, these high excess deaths. All this is taken from our world in data. All completely public domain. Check it out for yourself. It's all there for perusal. And you can make up your own graphs if you don't believe mine. Um, that's what the data is showing. Um, what our governments aren't providing us with and our health authorities, our medical journals are not providing us with our, uh, our answers.
to what to me is a big international problem. Um, let's hope more people start taking an interest in this soon. Let's hope the appropriate research money is allocated and let's hope the answers start coming thick and fast. But I don't see any movement in that direction at the moment. But you and me are now aware of this problem. So uh, thank you for uh, watching and giving me your attention on this video.